Look at that. Do you see it? That's Rudy, the A&W Bear. He was introduced back in 1973 and hung around for decades and then disappeared quietly. But then, in 2010, he resurfaced. Here's a crazy thing about Rudy. He didn't have the name Rudy. He was just the great root beer bear, the A&W Bear, forever. From 1973 till he disappeared. And then... In 2012, the reason we have the first name Rudy is because he signed up for Skype and they made it like a public joke. Hey, I signed up for Skype. You know, what do you think of this profile picture? And it said Rudy. That's why we have the name of this bear. He's a pretty popular bear. He had his own Android cell phone game called Burpin' Rudy. <laughs> I don't know how you play a burping game, but I would be up for it. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but a couple of years back, the M&Ms announced that they were uh, desexifying the green M&M. They said, you know, she's just a little too sexy. So they gave her regular shoes and kind of changed the way she looked. And at this point, they put out this as a public statement, almost like an apology to the public. We're so sorry that the green M&M was so sexy. And so to mock that, A&W put out this message about Rudy apologizing because he never wears any pants. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Acido Bimbo. ¿Cómo preparar unas deliciosas mantecadas en casa? The Bimbo Company was started in 1945 in Mexico, and what they did was packaged bread. They took the bread, they put it in cellophane wrappers, and their company grew and grew. Now, the name bimbo is a nonsense word in Spanish. I know in this country, in America, uh, bimbo is something that you wouldn't associate with this bear, I hope. Uh, but bimbo is a nonsense word, and it was made by taking two popular things that kids liked, uh, Bambi, which was a popular Disney movie at the time, and the song Bingo. Now, I mentioned that his name is Asito, and I may be pronouncing that wrong, but that means teddy bear in Spanish. All right, the next bear mascot I want to tell you about is the Golden Bear. This was from a Chicago restaurant that was around for many years. They were very big in the 1970s and 80s, and they also had something at that time called the Panquake. This was kind of an all-you-could-eat or a special deal on pancakes where you were determined to come in with your buddies and just prove a point. It looks like there's one location left. So we've got life left in the Golden Bear. Let's keep them alive because uh, that's a pretty good mascot. Now, in my area, we have ShopRite. I don't know if you guys do. They are in six states. Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. They were founded in 1946. And they have a bear mascot. This is Scrunchy. Here's Scrunchy on a notepad. All right. You know who this is? It's Smokey Bear. It's not Smokey the Bear. That is not his name. He's, of course, the mascot for the United States Forest Service, their campaign to try to stop forest fires. He started in 1944, and he is the longest-running public service announcement in the history of the United States. This is what it looked like in his very first appearance. A forest is sure a lot of things. Yes, but let a little fire get started. Catch on, destroy, and your forest is nothing. Nothing for anybody. You have so many reasons to protect your forests. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. The Coca-Cola Polar Bears. Now, these characters date back to 1922. And before I tell you about that, I want to say it's probably just that Coca-Cola has been around forever and polar bears is a very generic term. Uh, we're going to get into this specific type of bear. But in 1922, in a French Coca-Cola advertisement, they had a polar bear squeezing a Coca-Cola into the mouth of the sun. 
And after that, occasionally there would be a polar bear used in Coca-Cola advertisement over the decades. But then, in 1993, a very big campaign started featuring Coca-Cola polar bears. The first commercial of the campaign, very famous. I'm going to show you a little bit of it. It was about the polar bears getting together to see the Aurora Borealis. This commercial was very popular and Coca-Cola ran it over and over. And then a year later, Coca-Cola pays for product placement in the film Natural Born Killers. And so in the film, they have a scene where he's drinking a Coca-Cola and Coke said that that's not enough. We need more product placement. So during the edit of the film, they actually added this commercial into the film. What happens is there's a scene where Mickey is being interviewed by Wayne Gale, which is Robert Downey Jr. interviewing Woody Harrelson's character and Woody's got the shaved head and he's just killed a bunch of people. And they cut to commercial and they just show this commercial. I'm in love can kill the demon. How that thought. I remember sitting in a movie theater being like, we're just, there's just Coke commercial now. We're in the middle of a movie and we've cut away and now we're seeing a commercial. So that commercial, really very, very famous. Coca-Cola came under fire in 2014 because polar bears are one of the species that is protected and there's concern of them going extinct. So a group of activists said you should stop using polar bears. Uh, it's not right. And Coca-Cola said, hey, uh, why don't we donate $2 million a year to help the polar bear? And they said, well, that's not enough. You're a very large company. This kind of made news for a little while and then quietly went away. Bird's Eye also had a polar bear mascot. This one appeared like a stuffed doll, and he did some very funny commercials. The voice of the polar bear is Willem Dafoe. Hey, Jackie. You know, some frozen peas can be... How can I put it? Unpredictable. These ran from May of 2010 all the way into 2014. All right, let's move to 1958. Another polar bear. It's the Icy Bear. He was created by the company Norsworthy and Mercer. Do you remember the Blimpy Bear? Blimpy was a sandwich company. They're still around, but there's a lot less of them. They started all the way back in the 1950s in Hoboken, New Jersey. Now, there's a very interesting story behind how the chain got the name Blimpy. When Tony Kanza founded the chain, he wanted to call the sandwiches something other than subs. So he thought, let me search the dictionary and try to find a name, any kind of word that sounds like it could be the name of a sandwich. And then he looked and he found the word blimp and he thought blimpy yeah that sounds like it could be a sub so this is the bear from super sugar crisp he used to be known as sugar bear post now refers to him just as bear but he is the mascot for that line of cereals this character was created by a man named bob Irwin of post cereals and the voice of the original animated version of sugar bear was done by jerry matthews and what jerry was trying to do was give a kind of Bing Crosby, Dean Martin kind of attitude and voice, and it totally comes through. Kellogg Chocos. This is a cereal that only appears in Europe, the Middle East, and India. It's me, Choco! And their mascot is Chocos the Bear, who replaced Chocos the Monkey. Kids, now Chocos do it. How cute! Vanilla chocolate masaj all right, let's move on to the Ham's Bear. This is a very famous bear for Ham's Beer. Now, I know with all of the different IPAs you can get, you can probably get a ham-flavored beer. This is not what this was. Uh, that was just the name of the company. And this character was introduced in these very animated Saturday morning feeling cartoon segments. Thank you so much for watching these videos, by the way. I really appreciate it. Uh, big thanks to the Patreon members, especially Michael and Jessica. We are almost at 4,000 subscribers on this channel, which is mind-blowing to me.
Snuggle Fabric Softener came out in 1983, but they hit it big three years later when they debuted the Snuggle Bear. This was a puppet that was designed by Kermit Love. Kermit Love designed tons of the Muppets, except for Kermit. He, Kermit Love did not design. Jim Henson did that with his mom's overcoat and some ping pong balls. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Speaking of advertisements, Garfield has done a ton of advertisements for that new movie, and he's done some weird ones. There's a Garfield Lazy Boy. You can stay in a Garfield room at the Motel 6. I put it all together in a video that I'm going to put right here. Otherwise, YouTube says this is what is best for you. Do, do they really know what is best for you? If you want more videos, second channel's over there. And I'll see you next time.